Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. O Y A A A A A Ha. He here. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. This video right here is going to rely heavily on your knowledge on multivariable calculus and also linear algebra. Also, the next video in this small little series on integrals of this form right here. And I'm going to go into a lot of detail this time. So this advent calendar video is going to take a few minutes longer than usual. So you see, you could probably straight through calculate this right here, but we are going to do it differently. At first, I would like to diagonalize this matrix right here, but not only simple diagonalization, I would like to take a look at orthogonal diagonalization. So at first, we have to calculate the eigenvalues of this matrix A right here. Meaning we are going to calculate the characteristic polynomial of A and we want it to be equal to zero. What is the characteristic polynomial? Well, we are going to take a, so we are going to take a and subtract the eigenvalues times the unit matrix in two dimensions from it and take the determinant of this thing right here, meaning we are going to end up with, okay, so this is the determinant of two minus lambda, negative one, negative one, and then two minus lambda. Calculating the determinant is really quite easy. This is going to result in, well, 2 minus lambda squared, which is nothing but lambda squared minus 4 lambda, and then plus 4. And then this is positive 1, but negative sign, second part of the determinant, is negative 1. Meaning this right here is just going to be 3. I'm going to take a lot of things for granted, basically, so, so a lot of your knowledge, you could say. So just try following everything. And like I said, we want this polynomial to be equal to zero. This is the characteristic polynomial, meaning we can just calculate the zeros, the lambdas, the eigenvalues, meaning lambda 1 and 2 are now nothing but, okay, so we get negative, negative 4 over 2, this is just positive 2 plus minus square root of 2 squared, which is nothing but 4, minus 3, so this is 1. Meaning overall that lambda 1 is now nothing but where square root of 1 is 1. So the first eigenvalue is just 3, and the second eigenvalue is nothing but 2 minus 1, 1. This is what we get now. So we have found our eigenvalues, meaning we also know our diagonal matrix. We are going to call it T. This is nothing but, well, all the eigenvalues on the main diagonal. So 3, 0, 0, 1. Now what we need is our S, the two matrices that we need to diagonalize this A up here. So you see, because we want to get A being of the form S to the negative 1, so inverse matrix of S times T times S. This is what it means for something to be diagonalized. Okay, how can we calculate this S right here? Well, we just have to take a look at the eigenspace and we want to orthogonalize this eigenspace in the end. So at first we have to find the eigenvectors, meaning we are going to take a look at A minus lambda 1 times the unit matrix in two dimensions times some vector V1 being equal to the zero vector. If we rewrite this, well, what is it going to end up with? V1 is nothing but x and y, you could say it's out of R2. And if we calculate this, well, we have negative lambda 1, but if we plug this into here, so the first entry is going to result in negative 1 and this entry also. So we have this negative 1 matrix, you could say. So we have negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1 times xy being equal to 0, 0. If you solve the system of equation, you are going to see that those two rows are linearly dependent, meaning we can just parameterize, for example, y right here. Let's say y is equal to some parameter t. Let's choose a real number one, for example. So if we set y being equal to one, well, then we also know in this upper row, negative x is going to be equal to y. Okay, so our x is nothing but negative one. I know this is going really fast, but just try following everything, take a piece of paper and try it out for yourself. So that means our first eigenvector, v1, is nothing but, well, negative one and one. Let's take a look at the second eigenvector. Basically, we are just going to use this right here, but with lambda two with the second eigenvalue, so v2 in this case, 
meaning we are going to end up with. So 2 minus 1 is just 1. So we are going to end up with a system of equations 1, negative 1, negative 1 and 1 times xy being equal to 0, 0. I hope you can see where this came from. We can multiply this whole row, but I just hate this levitating blackboard. <laughs> Black pen, red pen really like this <laughs> in my x to the x integral video. So you see, if we multiply this row by negative 1, those two rows would be linearly dependent once again. So why not choose 1 once again as a parameter, y being equal to 1. If we multiply this together, you are going to see that x is equal to y, meaning our x is nothing but 1. Meaning our second eigenvector is now nothing but 1, 1. And now we can basically construct our s, which is going to look like s being equal to, well, just this right here. We are going to take those vectors and put them in the columns. But we want to normalize those vectors at first, in order for this to be an orthogonal matrix. What does it mean for a vector to be normalized? Well, it just means, for example, if we take v1 and we want to normalize it, we're going to take 1 over the norm of v1 times the vector v1 itself. Okay, so this is just normalization. What is the norm right here? Well, this is just Papa Pythagoras. So this one squared plus this one squared is 2 and taking the square root of that. So 1 over square root of 2 times this vector is our normalized vector. 1 over square root of 2 times negative 1 and 1. If you take a closer look, this normalization factor, 1 over square root of 2, is the same one for this right here. So if we normalize this v2 in the eigenspace, we're going to end up with a normalized vector version of 1 over square root of 2, 1, 1. And with this out of the way, we can actually construct our s containing of this vector and this vector in the columns. So our s is nothing but, okay, I'm going to write it out, negative 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2, and 1 over square root of 2. All that's really left to do is to invert our s right here. This is one of the goals. For this, we would like to calculate the determinant of, of this thing. So the determinant of s at first, because we have to divide by the determinant and times some stuff shifted in here. What's the determinant? This multiplied together, so this is negative one half, minus this diagonal multiplied together. It's once again negative one half, so this makes negative one in the end. What is our s to the negative one, the inverted matrix? is nothing but one over the determinant, so negative one, okay? And then we are going to interchange those two. So 1 over square root of 2. Down here we have negative 1 over square root of 2. And we are going to put a negative sign in front of those right here. So negative 1 over square root of 2. Negative 1 over square root of 2. Now we can distribute this negative sign into here. And what are we going to get? If we distribute this negative sign into here, well, we are basically just going to end up with S once again. But what is S exactly? S is the same thing as the transposed S. Transpose just means we are going to interchange the indices in here. So this is the 1, 2 thing. So the entry 1, 2, we are going to change it into the entry 2, 1, basically. So you see our inverse matrix is the same as our, well, transpose matrix, meaning this thing is orthogonalized. And with this out of the way, we can actually get started with the main problem. So this was a lot of work already, and now we can plug all the stuff into here. So you see, we were actually able to transform our A a little bit. We have diagonalized it, orthogonally diagonalized. So why not plug all the new information in? Namely, that our A is now nothing but, so this is R2, e to the negative inner product of x, Comma. Okay, A is nothing but S transposed times T times S times X, dx. And you see here's a neat little property of the inner product. If we have the inner product, we can express it like X transposed times this stuff right here. But we can actually bring this S transposed to the other side, transpose it once again, which is going to result in simply our S once again. In other words, we can rewrite this as r squared e to the negative s times x 
comma t s times x integrated with respect to x, this vector x right here. And this is actually pretty cool. So you see we have this common factor right here and now we can introduce a little substitution. Sorry, the chalk dust is killing my nose, it's so itchy. Meaning we are going to let s times x be equal to y for example. What is going to happen to our dx right here? Well, we are working in two dimensions in this case, multivariable calculus, meaning we have to take a look at the absolute value of the Jacobian determinant, meaning our dy, um, our dx is going to be the absolute value of our Jacobian determinant times dy. But here's a fun little fact. If you take an orthogonal matrix and multiply it by some vector x, for example, the Jacobian is just going to be the determinant of this orthogonal matrix actually. Just try it out for yourself using the definition of the Jacobian. But the absolute value of negative one is just one. So actually our dy is just our dx and we are going to end up with an integral over r2. Our region isn't just going to change, it's just going to stay as it is. e to the negative inner product of y t times y dy in this case. And now we can actually calculate this. Let's say our y is nothing but a vector with a y1 and y2 entry and we can actually multiply the stuff together because we know what our t is in here. Levitating blackboard just stop. So this right here is just vector uh, an integral in r2 e to the negative. Okay what's the inner product? We are going to take this first entry and multiply it together with this first entry. If we multiply y with t, we are going to end up with this multiplied, so 3, 0, 0, 1, with y1 and y2. This is going to result in, yeah, 3, y1, and just simply y2. I hope you can see where this came from, just simple matrix multiplication. So the first one is going to be negative 3, y1 squared, and then negative, okay, y2 squared, dy1, dy2. And actually, over this whole interval, our integrand is strictly positive, meaning we can use Papa Fubini to break this multiple integral, because this is here just an integral over an integral. We can break this up into the multiplication of two separate integrals, meaning our integral now is nothing but an integral over r, e to the negative 3, y squared, uh, y1, dy1, times integral over r, e to the negative y2 squared dy2. And I've made several videos on that. Those are just two Gaussian integrals, meaning this right here is now nothing but, well, square root of pi over square root of 3 times square root of pi over square root of 1. I'm going to put it like this because we can multiply this together. Up here we have square root of y uh, pi squared, so this is just pi over square root of 3 times 1. But I want you guys to notice something, square root of 3 times 1 is nothing but square root of the determinant of our diagonal matrix right here. So we can actually rewrite this into pi over square root, well, determinant of t. This was a lot of input. If you could follow everything I did, then you are a cool boy. I hope you did enjoy this pretty long video on Papa Flemmy's admin calendar. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend channel if you like. Buy those t-shirts I created. If you don't, well, I'm already grateful for you watching my videos. And well, I guess up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya. Anton? Anton? Hey? Guter Junge. Bist du verschneit? Prima. Ja, Agiro, bist du verschneit? Prima. Lass. Brömm.